rise and kingdoms fall but you remain sovereign lord through it all tides of change they wash the land but none can shake the promises lord in your hand come on sing it with me kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall but you remain sovereign lord through it all tides of change they wash the land but none can shake the promises lord in your hand through this fire our strength will fade the time is now to sing your praise oh. Yesterday has come and gone, and to remain faithful, Lord, through it all. So until I see your face, tell me bear the fruit of walking in your ways. You inspire, my strength will fade. The time is now to sing your praise. In this generation, we will glorify your name to the end of time. We lift you up. In this generation, Lord, we'll proclaim your name forevermore. Hey! Generation to generation The vessels change But the spirit is the same Generation to generation The exploits change But the hero is the same Generation to generation I give my life To bring glory to your name Generation to generation Even my embers will light another flame oh. In this generation we will glorify your name Today Come on, I want to hear you sing it out We lift you up We lift you up In this generation, Lord, we'll proclaim your name Final breath he gave his heavenly 
reflection and hid from my shame and lived in the shadows embrace my pain bound to the darkness would he see past all my sin and set me My name is Marquis. And I'm Destiny. And welcome to the Boston Church of Christ Campus Led Service. Woo! Thanks so much for joining us today. Today we're going to be hearing some amazing worship, a testimony and a video all by our campus students, as well as a sermon called Created for a Purpose by our own Weldon Gibson. Ooh, Weldon Gibson. Guys, if you guys do not mind, let's go ahead and bow our heads and say a quick prayer for the service. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for allowing us to come together even in the midst of COVID, Father. I just pray and ask that you just really speak through Weldon and use Weldon for service, God. Today we're going to be talking about being created for a purpose, Father. I pray that I can just touch each and every single one of our hearts, Father, and you can just really allow us to dive into your word and dive into who you are, Lord God. Thank you for allowing campus to have this opportunity to come out here and lead service today, Father. But I also want to pray for contribution, Father. I just want to say thank you for allowing us to come together, Father, and just um, show and give and uh, provide 
what we have earned from you, Lord God. You know, contribution is to build and advance your kingdom, Father. I pray that we really take that to heart, Father, and just give you what we have earned, Father, for you and for others around us as well, Father. Thanks so much for this time. Thanks so much for this day, Father. I also want to say a quick prayer for worship, Father. Uh, I just pray and ask, Father, that we just be led by worship, Father, by those who are doing worship, Father, and just be amazing, Father, and just really come together and give you the praise that you deserve, Father. In the mighty and powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Now let's get ready for worship.
guys at home uh, for joining us today. Please sing along as we do one more.
Good morning, you guys. My name is Namani Watson. For those who don't know me, I'm a disciple here at the campus ministry up in Soko, and this is my testimony. Growing up, I my family wasn't really religious. We claim, well, sometimes I'm claiming to be Christians, but don't really live the lifestyle like that. And we used to go to church like every Easter and Christmas. And growing up, I was kind of like a real sneaky kid. Back in middle school and high school, I used to smoke and drink get me high and hung over in the middle of class, not doing my work. The only time I really had my act together was when I played sports in high school. And that was only for like three months or so, out of the whole 10 months of school. Um, what else? What else? Um, all I cared about was, was smoking and drinking and chasing out that worldly feelings that was no good for me. And I had a lot of hate and anger inside of me and in my heart as well. One reason why I was so angry is because of the fact I do have epilepsy, I am epileptic, and I used to get bullied and made fun of because I used to have seizures, and I used to pity myself thinking, oh, why me, why is this happening to me? And I used to go to therapy. I used to like fight with my therapist and like stuff like that, and like two or three of them quit on me. And I, looking back, I do feel really, really, really bad about that whole situation. Fast forward back in January 2020, I met this man named Mervy. He was a Zen campus minister at the time. He stalked me and asked me, well, he spoke to me and talked to me about the campus ministry, invited me to this thing called Devo on Friday night. At first, I was reluctant on going, but then, like as the weeks went on, probably like two, three weeks, I eventually went because I thought it was a sign from God. I ended up really liking the people and the campus ministry. I ended up um, agreeing to letting two of them teach me about the Bible and stuff like that. And as the days, weeks, months went on, my love for God grew more and more. And I ended up um, reading the Bible on my own, praying two or three times a day, which I still do to this very day. Uh, what else? And on April 26, 2020, I ended up getting baptized during this whole crazy wild pandemic situation. And now I cast all my fears, worries, anxieties on the board because I struggle with my mental health sometimes. And now God has set me free from set me free from a multitude of sins. And now I live my life for him. My name is Nye Watson, and this is my testimony. So if you lived in ancient Bible times, odds are you lived under the authority of a king. And many of these kings claimed that they were oh. gods, and they would even call themselves the image of God. Meaning they had authority to tell people what to do, order things to be made. Yeah, they got to define good and evil. And these kings would often make statues of themselves, which in Hebrew were called tselem, often translated as idol or image. But for Israel, they didn't view their kings as the God. In fact, they were never supposed to even make images of God. It's exactly right. And that was really unique for that time and culture. This is rooted, first of all, in Israel's belief that you can't reduce the creator God down to any one thing in creation. But there's another reason. People aren't to make images of God because God has already made images of himself. When did he do that? Well, let's go to page one of the Bible. And the first person we meet there is God. He's the one with authority over all creation. He speaks and creation obeys. And he defines what is good and not good. In other words, he alone is king. But then surprisingly, as the pinnacle of all of God's creative work, he makes humans. And he calls all of them the image of God. So he gives all humans the authority to rule. Exactly. That's what he goes on to say. He tells the humans to subdue the earth and to rule it. And so this task that once belonged only to elite kings is here in the Bible the task of every human being. This was a revolutionary statement in its day because all humans are being called to rule and to participate in the human project. So what does this mean? I mean, how are we all supposed to rule? So the picture we get in Genesis is gardening. Gardening? Yes. 
gardening. So they rule the earth by cultivating it, by harnessing all of the earth's raw potential and then making something more and new out of it. So growing food for each other. Yes, but that also includes growing families then, which become neighborhoods. And then they create communities where people are going to work and take care of each other and build businesses and cities that will expand to new places and so on. So ruling is really the day-to-day acts of our work and creativity. Yes, we take the world somewhere. This is humanity's divine and sacred task. Yeah, and this all sounds really nice. And humans have designed some pretty great things. But just as often we create things that cause a lot of suffering and a lot of injustice, so maybe we shouldn't actually be ruling. Yeah, so the Bible addresses this. In Genesis, what happens is that God gives humans a choice about how they're going to rule. So are they going to use their authority for the benefit of others, which is God's definition of good, or are they going to turn away and define good and evil for themselves and use their authority for self-advantage? And in the story, they choose to define good and evil on their own terms. And so this is the Bible's depiction of the human condition. So sometimes we pull off amazingly good stuff, but just as often, despite our best intentions, we act selfishly and we create evil in the world. And so we're stuck as mediocre rulers making a mess of things. But that's not the end of the story. So the Bible goes on and it makes this claim that all of this was resolved when God bound himself to humanity through Jesus. And he showed us what it looks like to truly rule as a human. So what does it look like? Well, Jesus ruled by serving and by seeking the best for others, by putting himself underneath them and loving not just his friends, but also his enemies. And that's not a typical way to rule. And not only that, Jesus confronted the consequences of all of the evil and the death that we have created by our messed up ways of ruling. And he takes it. I mean, he lets it kill him. And so when the New Testament writers looked back to Jesus' resurrection, they see a whole new future opening up for all humanity. Jesus is a new way to be human. Yeah, that's why they called Jesus the image of God or the new human. And not only that, they also believe that Jesus' divine life and power is now available to heal and to transform us to become our life and power. And this sounds really nice, but what does it really look like? So practically, the Apostle Paul said it looks like people being filled by Jesus' own presence and spirit, filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and integrity and gentleness and self-control. He says this is the new humanity that God wants to create in us so that we become people in whom God's image is being restored, people who will move the human project forward. And that's actually how the story of the Bible ends. It's a renewed world where God is on his throne and his servants are all around him, but they're the ones ruling over this new world, taking it into new uncharted territory with Jesus as their healer and their guide. What's up, church? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Weldon Gibson, and I'm the new campus intern here helping lead the campus family. I'm excited to be preaching today as we talk about 1 Peter. We continue our series. Over the past week, the campus students have been doing this thing we like to call Rush Week. Rush Week is the time that we've taken to share our faith and flood the internet with Jesus. The internet is full of all kinds of garbage and toxicity, so it's refreshing to see the younger generation taking the time to share their faith about God on every social media platform. We took every day of the week and we shared our faith and it was amazing to see the results. That's radical. So I just want to say thank you. I want to shout out the campus family, shout out to the campus. Thank you guys so much for just rushing to save souls and giving your week to, to share your faith online. So, you know, as we adapt, right, as we adapt to this new lifestyle that we've been living in during a pandemic, there's so many reflecting questions that come to our minds during these times. Some of them being, where am I going in my life? You know, what am I doing in my life? What am I doing with my life? Am I happy with where I'm at right now? How can I be successful? Or what is my purpose? What is my purpose? Everyone has a purpose. The question is, do you know yours? Are you confident in what you think that your purpose is? Today, we're going to be talking about how God has chosen you for a purpose. Our title is 
chosen for a purpose. Chosen for a purpose. We're going to be reading out of 1 Peter 1, starting in verse 22. So in 1 Peter 1, starting in verse 22, it says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the glory fades. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. I have two points for you guys today. And our first point is chosen to love. Chosen to love. Chosen to spread love. In verse 22 it says, it says, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so have you a sincere love for your brothers. Love one another deeply from the heart. Love one another deeply from the heart. This verse is challenging us to love one another deeply and sincerely, truthfully from the heart. Love is a key ingredient that is missing in our world today. It's missing in our interactions today. And not just any kind of love, but a deep, sincere, and a godly love. That's what's missing. We need to ask ourselves, am I a sincere friend to other people? Am I a sincere friend to the people in my community? You know, do I really care? Or am I struggling to care for people? Am I struggling to show compassion? Sincere love and deep love for others means showing love by action and not just with speech. It's so easy to talk a good game, but not really show up when it's time. Showing up to a friend's house when they're in need is important. Making the phone calls checking in and being there for others when they're struggling, showing empathy and seeking to understand a perspective outside of your own, being selfless and putting the needs of others before yourself. Love is a sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. Love is being sacrificial. Love is being honest with a friend even when it hurts. Love is a universal language. It can be spoken across all cultural backgrounds. To be chosen means authenticity. It means realness. It means love, real love. Spreading love is a part of all of our purposes. This, this is a part of our purpose. Spreading love is a part of our purpose. With all the evil and the pain and the loss and the destruction and the death that's happening in the world today, a sincere love and compassion is needed big time. Continuing on in verse 24 through 25, it says, For all people are like grass. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass, the grass withers away and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. With a lack of love, there comes a lack of true security. A lack of understanding one's purpose. What happens is that when you don't feel sincere love, when you don't feel that sincere love in your life, you start to look for love in all the wrong places. You start to look for love and all the places that actually don't have it there for you, that can't give it to you. The Bible says that only God and his word last forever. Only God and his word last forever. Only God and his word. Do we look to fleeting materials, worries, pleasures, concerns of this world for security? Or are you someone who, who chooses purpose over pleasure? Choosing your purpose over, your, over pleasure, over things that you look for pleasure in. Choose your purpose over that. It can be hard. It can be discouraging to try to go for that, but try it out, right? It says that, that the word of God lasts forever. God is love and his love endures forever. That all men are like grass. Their glory fades. Your job descriptions, worldly accolades, money, material possessions will all wither away. These things will all wither away. These things do not last. Are you someone who relies on and finds identity in these things that will waste away? or in God who lasts forever. If you don't have God, you don't have love. I want you to consider a relationship with God today if you don't have one. And if you do have one, I want to consider you to dig deeper, to dig deeper into that relationship with him, to be secure in that. We got to understand that chosen to love means being loved by each other, that we're chosen to love. We're chosen to give love. We're chosen to receive love, right? 
But then again, in life, sometimes it's, it's hard to love. It's hard to love when you yourself are sick. Have you ever had a severe flu or a severe sickness and tried to keep functioning or tried to keep pushing through, tried to go to work or tried to go to school or tried to maybe play in a sports game with the flu? It's tough. It's very difficult. It's very hard. In verse 1, in 1 Peter 2, it says, Therefore, rid yourselves, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. After reading that, you know, you think about this, right? Is that before you can love other people, you have to get your own heart and your own energy in the right place. You have to rid yourselves of all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, and envy. These sins are a sickness that clog your heart and stop you from not only giving love, but receiving it. Notice how all the sins listed are interactions in relationships. Hypocrisy, malice, bitterness, slander, hypocrisy. You want love, but don't want to give love. You want to be comforted, but you don't want to give comfort to other people when they're in need. It's a big one. You know, are you holding on to any of these things in your heart? You have to rid yourselves of any hindrances or inner obstacles that can block our spiritual growth to get rid of unhealthy and toxic attitudes towards other people. Get rid of these things. Get open. Get honest. Get real. Get your heart out of the darkness. Loving others is a calling and definitely a chosen purpose. It's not easy. Loving others is not easy, especially when it's difficult with certain people in your life, right? It takes maturity. I think if you're going to call yourself chosen by God, you have to act like it. You can't claim to be chosen by God, but yet harbor bitter envy or bitterness in our hearts or act nicely in front of others, but slander them behind their backs. It's actually easier to slander your friends than a stranger. You have to know more about friends than strangers, right? So ask yourself, are you someone who slanders your friends or the people around you? We're chosen to love, not chosen to hate. Being chosen to love doesn't mean only loving friends, but also enemies. Is there anyone in your life today that you're bitter towards and unresolved with? I want to challenge you to resolve those things today. Resolve those issues with that person today. Call them up. Talk to them. Text them. Say, hey, I want to get time. I want to be resolved. I got to be open about what's going on in my heart. That's stopping me from being chosen to love. Not only that, but I want you guys to make a list. Make a list of things that hinder your spiritual growth. And seek God's help to remove those obstacles. Let's continue reading in 1 Peter 2, verse 4. In 1 Peter 2, verse 4, it says, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious stone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame, will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who don't believe, the stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you, you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of his darkness into his wonderful light. Wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. My second point is chosen as royalty. Chosen as royalty. Royalty is one of my favorite words. Chosen as royalty. You may be wondering, what does that mean? What does that even mean? How can I be chosen as royalty by God? The Bible literally states that in scripture, chosen as royalty. You guys are royalty to him. He has made us royalty. Notice in verses four through five, you see the word, the living stone. The living stone in a, in a capital S. That means Christ. Christ is the capital S. Jesus is the capital S. He is the original stone, the OG stone, the living stone. That's Christ, right? As you continue, you see a lowercase s where it says that we will be stones, little stones, living stones. 
We are the lowercase s. We're meant to be an image of Christ. We're meant to imitate Christ. Because of Christ, we have the ability to follow and become a part of him, becoming royalty and becoming family with Jesus. We become royalty with him when we decide to imitate him. He is the original, right? We are chosen by God and valued by him to be many stones. That's a high calling. It feels good to be believed in, right? God believes in us. God is trusting and believing that we can be many stones in the lost world, helpless and harassed, a world that's lost, helpless and harassed. You can see it on the news. Just turn on the TV. But are we failing him? Are we failing God who's believing in us to be little stones of Christ? Oftentimes, we want the benefit of things, but not the hardships that come with it. Jesus was rejected. Jesus was hated. He was misunderstood and outcasted. He died for the greater good, the ultimate greater good. To be chosen by God means to be rejected by the world. The chosen path is always lonelier. It's a lonelier path. It's just the truth. If you're not being hated by the world and you're a Christian, something isn't right. On the contrary, if you're too comfortable in a world full of sin, something still isn't right. The world is jacked up, especially right now. Are you rejected by the world because of Christ? Or are you seeking comfort in a world you don't even belong in in the first place? Have you ever felt like you don't belong? That you were meant for something greater? Well, spoiler alert, you are. You are meant for something greater. If you're listening to this right now, you're meant for something greater. There's a William Shakespeare quote that says, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. If you're listening today and you feel like greatness hasn't chosen you, then maybe you need to choose greatness. Choosing greatness means choosing Christ. Choosing greatness means choosing Jesus. Choosing greatness means choosing royalty. Choosing royalty. Everyone watching this right now was chosen to be great by God in some way. In some way, we've all been chosen by God. In verse 6, in 1 Peter 2, it says, For in Scripture, it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and one who trusts in it will never be put to shame. The one who trust, trusts in this cornerstone will never be put to shame. That cornerstone is Christ. Do you trust in Jesus? Who do you trust in? Those who trust in God will never be put to shame. You'll never be put to shame. You'll never be shamed. Do you have a relationship with God? God is our rock. and He made Christ our cornerstone. Christ is our foundation. As you're listening right now, how is your foundation today? Are you solid? Are you a solid person? Or are you wobbling? About to come tumbling and crumbling down in your faith? Are you on the brink of struggling in your faith? Are you on the brink of leaving God during these times? Do you even have God in your life? Jesus helps us to be secure in our purpose and solid in our identity. Jesus should be what defines us. In verses 8 through 10 in 1 Peter 2, it says, They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood. A holy nation, God's special possession, his special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. See, this is what God, who God says we are. This is what he says we are. This is how he labels us, royal people. We're royalty, chosen as royalty to be a part of his family. We need to think more about what God calls us by and not what man tries to define us by on earth. We are kings and queens. You're a king. You're a queen to God. God has made you royalty. Our father in heaven validates us and gives us an important responsibility. He validates us. But yet we still chase after a relationship status, a friendship, standards of social media, a certain body image, an expensive car a house, and all these shallow things to validate us. Do you really think a job description, an hourly pay, defines you and your worth and your value? If you do, that's just sad. It's sad to think that somebody giving you hourly pay is what defines your worth and your value. Some people think that way. That's just real. But in the eyes of God, you're royalty. Royalty, you're destined for so much more than 12 hours. 
You're destined to so much more than that. The world thinks royalty means more money, more material. But royalty is a character and a heart posture. Royalty is purity, love, and respect. Integrity. Royalty is compassion, courage, and sacrifice. Royalty is Christ. Royalty is being a man of God. Royalty is being a woman of God. As royalty, it's our job to make God known, to make God popular, declaring him everywhere. We all have interest in things that we like that we talk about all day long, whether it's a show on Netflix or your favorite shoes, favorite pair of shoes, your favorite brand of shoes, whatever it may be. We don't talk about God nearly as much as we talk about all these shallow things. We need to season our conversations with salt and talk about God way more. We become advocates for the truth when we talk about him. That's what makes us chosen as royalty is being advocates for God, being advocates for truth. God already knows what you will become. If you're sitting at home right now, you're struggling, you're like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what my purpose is. There's a simple cure. There's a simple answer to that. Come to God. Talk to God. Build a relationship with God because God knows what your, your purpose is. He created it. He created your purpose. He made your purpose. Why not come to the creator of your purpose and figure out what it is? Instead of trying to find it on your own, it's much harder. It's much difficult, much more difficult. In conclusion, let me share a story about one of my favorite Bible characters. His name was David. David was the youngest out of all his brothers. He was looked down because of his youth. Looked down on because of his youth. He was younger. He was the youngest. He was a shepherd boy that tended flocks. His, battle, his, his brothers were out battling at war. And he was at home tending flocks. His own family didn't see him as anointed or chosen by God. But God chose him. And while he was at home tending flocks, God gave him the power to kill lions, to kill bears. God gave him the strength to slay a giant. Earlier on, his family would have never seen him as a king. Someone who's, who's king material, someone who's, who's king caliber. But in due time, God made him king over Israel. God made David king. Whether or not people see you're a king or not doesn't matter. Whether or not people see that you're a queen or not doesn't matter. Man looks at the outward appearance and God looks at the heart. God knows what you're capable of. He sees your gifts. He sees your talents. Be patient and wait for your time. But just know that you're chosen to be royalty. You're chosen as royalty by God. God chose you. No other man or woman should be more have more validation for you over God. David accepted his purpose and he claimed it with confidence. He claimed it with confidence. He, he slayed a, a giant by the name of Goliath as a young kid because he knew that God valued him. He knew and trusted in the way that God spoke about him and what, what God gave him, the strength that God gave him in his life. So I have a question for you guys. Are you disobeying the message? Are you rejecting your purpose? Are you running and hiding? It's time to stop running. It's time to grab your purpose and live it. So remember, just remember this. You've been chosen for a purpose, chosen to love and chosen as royalty. To God be the glory. Let's wrap up in a word of prayer before we go to communion. Father God, thank you so much for this time to pray and come before you, God. I'm so grateful, God, to be able to um, just to be able to preach this message on being chosen for a purpose. We're all chosen for a purpose, God. I pray that we can all ask ourselves the question that what is our purpose? What is our purpose, God? What have you chosen us for, God? Help us to find that purpose and to live it out, God. I'm praying for um, just all the hurt and the pain and the confusion, God, and the loss in the world today, Father God. There's so many things that we've gone through during this pandemic and during this quarantine that have been a struggle for us, God. I pray that you give us clarity and guidance, God, and lead us, God. Give us peace. Take away anxiety. Take away, take away the anger. Um, take away, God, the, the stress. Help us to see how you're trying to grow. Help us to grow in character through hardship, God. Sometimes hardship and pain and struggle is the best way to mature, God. So I just pray that you be with us in that way, God. As we come and we're we about to go to communion, Father, I pray that um, we can remember Christ and the sacrifice that he made for us, the blood that he, that he shed for us, the flesh that, that he died to for us, Father God. Help us to remember him in those ways, God. We love you, Lord. We need you. I pray that we can be images of you, that we can be chosen people, and we can act like chosen people to you in our lives, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
taught the sun where to stand in the morning. Who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? Well, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. All of creation testifies. This life within me cries I know my Redeemer lives mm-hmm. The very same God That spins things in orbit He runs to the weary The warm for joining us for service today and we definitely want to thank Woden so much for preaching mm-hmm. to us about being chosen for a purpose yes. but before you leave we have three things that we would like to share with you three of these being online giving kids church and the connect card for online giving we would love to continue we would love to have you continue to be giving and sacrificial for those of you who oh, oh wait and also for those of you who may not know we also have a kids church so for those who have kids it would be the perfect opportunity for you to worship with your children and finally, we have the Connect card. And for those of you who are interested, um, just fill it out, send it in, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
Yes. And I have two announcements for us as well. The first one being our women's service. It's going to be online this year and on October 24th. It's going to be very exciting for women who are members of the church or not members of the church. All are invited. Um, bring a friend. Feel free. Um, it's going to be very fun um, and inspirational. And the second announcement that I have for us is our special missions. Uh, we take this up once a year and it's to help support our churches out in Europe. So we really want to encourage everybody to be praying for that and preparing for it. So thanks so much. Thank you Bye. so much.